Hey guys, Chris and Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. We're about to head off for a drive. You can see my van in the window reflection of the shop. We're not open today, but I have a furniture rescue mission. So come along with me, I'll explain on the way. Okay, we're going for a short drive. It's only about 10 minutes out of town. And um, I'll film the road, so I know you guys like to see the scenery around here. It's quite a windy day. I haven't used my microphone in the car as yet, so hopefully the audio is all right while we're driving. But I'll explain the, the setup as we go out there. Okay, let's hit the road. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall off the mount. It looks a bit flimsy where it is. Uh, I guess you guys will see a bit of an interesting tumble if it falls off. Okay, so the story is that I got a phone call just before Christmas from a lady who I hadn't met before, but she lives just out of town and she has to move house. Her property is sold. Uh, everything has to be gone by the 9th of July. It's currently the 4th. I suppose I can go. Those lights are green. And uh, she didn't have a lot to clear out uh, and she wondered if I wanted to take some furniture. And I, I was all geared up to say, look, sorry, we don't buy furniture. Uh, it's really hard to sell. We don't have a lot of room, you know, the normal story. And before I could get a word in, she said, I don't want anything for it. I just don't want to throw it out. And if you don't want it, it's got to go to the tip. So, um, you know, that's my Achilles heel. I thought, oh, well, we'll have a look. What have you got? And she said, I was hoping she wasn't going to say beds or um, lounge suites. But she said, oh, there's an old sideboard, a little kitchen table, a chopping board. And I think that was about it. So I thought, look, it's we could squeeze that in the shop. If the sideboard is an old one, it might look quite nice. Um, and because I'm getting it for nothing and saving it from going to the tip, we'll go and have a look. So Kristen and I ducked out to have a look uh, just before Christmas. We didn't have time to pick it up then. Uh, we just went out in our car. And it's not bad, actually. So um, she was most grateful that we could rehome it. So the time has come now. Uh, I didn't go out just after Christmas because it was so hot. But the time has come now. It's a bit cooler, very windy, as I said. But we'll go out and pick it up in the van. I've made enough room in the back of the van that I think we can get it in. And I've got my trolleys and things, so I reckon I can load it on my own. So let's just duck out the road and go and pick it up, save it from the tip. Just heading out of town now. Uh, we only live in a small town, for those of you that don't know. Uh, where I am, I'm in central Victoria, just about an hour or so north of Melbourne. Uh, it's a small country town. I think it's around about 1,500. Oh, I think it's actually over 2,000 people now. It is growing very quickly. Uh, it's quite a uh, quite a go-to place for retirees. We've got a nice climate. We've got uh, the Goulburn River and the, the lake here, so it's a beautiful setting. Uh, the only trouble, of course, with rivers and lakes, well rivers particularly, as you get bad floods and of course I documented a few of those on our on my channel a little while ago, back in October I think it was. Um, and this is the entrance to the caravan park. If you guys, those of you who watched my flood reports, uh, this driveway here was pretty well water right up to the edge of it and the whole caravan park was pretty much decimated where my daughters have a cafe so they're still not in there yet. Uh, the buildings are getting rebuilt slowly but the park probably won't be open properly for another three months or so. And now we cross over the Goulburn River. And uh, I can't actually show you the camp show you the river unless I stop and move the camera, but it's pretty full still. Um, but certainly a long way down on what it was. This road was cut in numerous places uh, when we had all that rain back in early spring. So there's a big horse stud on our left here. That was actually where black caviar was uh, born. So our town's our area is quite famous for uh, a lot of big horse studs and quite famous horse racing names. And they certainly do inject some money into the economy along with wineries and there's a lot of mixed farming as well. So it's a fairly diverse area. And the area where we're heading is actually into the Goldfields area. So Nagambi's not known as a Goldfields town. I've got to do a right hand turn here. But uh, now that we're over the other side of the river, we head out to the edge of the um, state forest. The countryside changes and becomes quite gravelly and it, and it was a scene of uh, gold rushes back in the 1800s. 
So yes, we are driving on the correct side of the road for this part of the world. Uh, I don't know how you guys go that swap from one place to another and have to get used to right-hand drive cars after driving a left-hand drive car. I think it'd do my head in. And for those overseas that haven't seen much of Australia, as far as road conditions go, this road is, is sealed. It's a bitumen road. It's a very common, very typical country road for, uh, for a reasonable amount of traffic. It is divided in the middle, but many of them don't have the white dotted lines down the middle, and they're really only one car width. So if you have uh, vehicles coming the other way, you've got to s slow up and put two wheels in the gravel. Uh, but this is a pretty typical road. They're not always in such good condition, particularly after the floods we had. There's another horse stud just on our right there. Uh, and you do have to go slow around the bends because oncoming traffic could be a bit of a problem if you go too fast. Now this road becomes a gravel road up here a bit, which again is a very typical country road in Australia. Uh, closer to the cities everything's pretty well sealed, but once you get out from the major cities and into a lot of the forest areas and uh, more uh, broad acre farmland, you have a lot of roads that aren't sealed. Some of them are gravel, some of them are just basically dirt. It depends on the district you're in as to how passable they are in wet weather. Uh, generally a gravel road is fine even in very wet conditions, unless of course there's been creeks flood over and wash it away. Uh, whereas where I grew up over in the Wimmera, where it's not gravelly at all, it's all a quite a nice clay which is great for cropping, it's you know good soil, but if you have um, a few mil of rain the roads are so slippery you can't stay on them and if you have a, quite a lot of rain you get bogged to the axles and even tractors can get bogged trying to get you out so you kind of do know need to know your areas when you're driving off the sealed roads um, but a lot of Australia is quite gravelly and generally the uh, wet conditions don't impact it too much more the danger is that um, gravelly gravel can be quite slippery in a vehicle and uh, also you can have bad corrugations from the wind causing erosion and they can shake your car to bits uh, almost literally after a while and the other problem we have is uh, a lot of wildlife and I know you have wildlife in other countries that cause issues um, we of course have kangaroos there's a, road, a sign just there and they're liable, liable to bound out of the bush at any given time here we go onto the gravel so I hope it doesn't make too much road noise for you uh, kangaroos are worse early in the morning or on dusk and they can just shoot out of the bush and pretty well land right in front of you and some of them are very large and can cause a lot of damage. I have hit one or two in my life but fortunately uh, no major damage. Uh, more of the trouble is people swerve to avoid them and then lose control of the car and end up hitting a tree. So as sad as it is to kill an animal you are much better not swerving and uh, at least your, your car can be repaired and or the animal probably can't be repaired but it probably made a stupid move jumping in front of you but if you swerve and end up hitting a tree well that's um, you know that's really avoidable okay so we're into the really the gold country now it's and you can hear those um, the uh, the road noise from the little indentations from the what do you call it the wind erosion on the gravel it makes little grooves and it can really jar the car around as I mentioned anyway we don't have too far to go down here I'll, I'll get back to you when we get to the property it's a fair bit of traffic on this road today but most drivers are really uh, polite and, and slow right up no one wants a broken windscreen or a a, you know chipped paint to their car so uh, everyone slows up and generally does the right thing the right worry would be seeing someone that's not familiar with the area going too fast on a bend and and hitting the brakes on this sort of road uh, is bad news because you actually tend to you, you feel like you go faster because the car loses traction and then you lose total control and if you don't run slide into another car you'll slide into a tree so um, I think I told my kids when you're learning to drive on these sort of roads is always approach a bend 
as if there's a car just about to come around. Always imagine that there's a car about to come around the bend and that just keeps you prepared. Okay, we've got to take this road here to the right and it's called Spring Lane and then we turn down a road, road called, uh, I think it's Gold Diggers Road which is quite appropriate for the area. I think this is it, yes here we go, Gold Diggers Road. I wouldn't like to live out in this countryside in bushfire times. I don't know if there's been a bushfire through here. But I think it'd be pretty scary. The bush would um, burn very quickly. And here we go, here's our destination. Let's hope the van can get in here okay. very narrow drive plus the uh, the overhanging branches are a bit of a problem with the van because it's so high I might get a few scrapes Okay, I'm not sure if this audio will work, but I'm actually filming my own arrival. Um, just for effect, trying a bit of uh, artistic filmmaking. So I would imagine the audio should be working now. So I shall back up as close as I can to the gate. The lady doesn't have her dogs here today, I think, which is good. I didn't want to have to battle dogs. And hopefully we can get the sideboard out to the back of the van easily. I've got a ramp in the van so it should be easy to load. Goody. I think that'll do. Hopefully we can fit all we need to fit in here. And we might need to prop the doors open as it's so windy here. And I still have some farm stuff in the van, so I haven't got around to finishing cleaning all that up. And I better do it soon because we have to go back to the farm in a couple of weeks. I told you it's windy. Okay, let's go and have a look at the furniture. And yes, the keys in the door, isn't it nice to be trusted? Well, I guess they're trusting of anyone. So the furniture, there it is, in the middle of the room. Oh, I didn't know about this cupboard. It doesn't look overly flash. It's only a really modern chipboard thing that's a bit saggy. Uh, I don't know if I want to take that or not. Uh, oh, there was a sewing machine. She told me there was a sewing machine. And one side should flip up, there we go. It's probably a singer. Very hard to sell those things. And she did also mention there were some prints that I could take, so she's gonna put it all in the pile. Well, clearly that's the pile. A little retro TV stand. Uh, a nice kitchen chopping block, that's pretty cool. That's on wheels, that should sell okay. Uh, and that's the sideboard. So that's quite a nice one. It's uh, 1920s maybe, and it hasn't got the right handles on it. Someone's replaced the handles. But uh, it's a nice timber sideboard. That will look quite nice in the shop. It's not going to get a lot. I'll show you how I'm just going to clean that up when I get it back to the shop. We'll give, give it a bit of a wipe over, make it a bit more presentable. I'll leave those handles. I'm not going to change them back to originals, even though I've probably got some originals somewhere. And the table's kind of cute. With a nice timber top, painted white underneath. Uh, looks a little rough but it's real timber so that should uh, sell quite well and until it does sell it'll make a nice prop in the shop we can put stuff on it uh, the couple of chairs will probably just be giveaways and I guess I'll take that cabinet because she does obviously want to clean up and she clearly doesn't want it and if I can help by removing a bit of rubbish that she might throw out otherwise that's got to be good and we'll probably just give that away on Facebook someone will have a use for it all right, I better start loading up. Right, our general rule of thumb is to load the biggest things first. 
and I've got my piano trolley which is a really handy gadget I've moved entire houses with this trolley and the um, the sideboard isn't solid it's ply on the sides it has got a solid top and the mirror weighs a bit but with the drawers out of it it should tilt up okay we'll slide it this way a bit it slides on tiles pretty easily now we'll roll our piano trolley under and there's lots of spider webs under here but I think we should be able to get a reasonable spot to sit it there we go into the van the piano trolley is awesome for getting up and down steps uh, stairs it's a bit of a problem but step one single step it can handle pretty well and for turning you just push down on one end and pivot off to the van okay we'll see if we can get up the ramp without any major mishaps our height's okay very good so you can see with a bit of thought and the right tools <clears throat> Even an old guy with a dodgy hip and a recovering shoulder can still load furniture. Okay, problem. I moved the trolley. The door keeps blowing closed on me. What would MacGyver do? We found a rope. I reckon we can attach this with a suitable granny knot and tie it to my mirror problem solved okay the table's in and I've put a doona over it and I think we can slide the big white cupboard across the top there should leave us enough room at the back here to put the other small pieces of furniture and the prints can probably go in the front of the van okay we're all loaded up I did not put the white cupboard in because I tried to move it and the whole thing flexed it almost fell apart so uh, and the back panel off it was almost <coughs> almost uh, disconnected uh, so it's one of those cheap kit form flat pack things and I didn't want to take it back because I'd end up having to pay to get rid of it uh, I wasn't told about that in the first place so I'm sure the lady will understand but the rest of the stuff's all gone we've cleaned up that spot in the lounge now to get home and work out where I'm going to put it okay guys <clears throat> let's get home that's another load of stuff saved from landfill uh, the white cupboard I pushed back against the wall it actually looks quite okay back against the wall so I reckon she could leave it with the property and the new owners might have a use for it so um, it doesn't need to go to the tip hopefully yet it could be fixed up but like all those flat pack things they're not of great value and they do need a bit of bracing to get them solid unless it's fixed to the wall somehow anyway we've saved all the stuff that she was going to throw out if I didn't take so I'm happy with that uh, I can make a few dollars out of it all uh, I won't go through that perhaps in this video we'll call this video finished we will say mission successful we've rescued the furniture we've saved it going to the tip and that's uh, got to be a good thing for all concerned uh, perhaps I'll do a part two when I clean it all up uh, I was going to show you how I cleaned that old sideboard up we'll do that in another part and uh, I'll show you the items in the shop and what price we put on them and this driveway is very bumpy and um, yeah we'll see what the deal works out it's taken me an hour and it's only about 10 minutes drive so less than an hour and a half and it will be well worth their while financially and as i said we've saved it from going to the tip all right thanks for watching guys better watch out for cars and kangaroos and we'll see you in the next video bye for now